Greetings from just off Orwell Lane. Tonight, the second episode of the summer series of season one. Also, the second to have traded out Blue Coal as the sponsor for B.F. Goodrich. Enjoy Margot Stevenson and Orson Welles himself in The Shadow, Death from the Deep, from April 3rd, 1938. <laughs> Who knows what evil lurks in the hearts of men? <laughs> the shadow knows. Ladies and gentlemen, The Shadow's exciting adventure will start in just a moment. But first, I have an announcement that should be set screaming across every front page in America. Because it's all about the safest thing on wheels. The new Goodrich Safety Silvertown Tire with the Lifesaver Tread. Imagine, not only does this sensational Silvertown give you the greatest skid protection you have ever known, and Golden Ply Blowout Protection that has already saved thousands of motorists' lives, it gives you both of these life-saving features at no extra cost. The new Goodrich Lifesaver Tread has a truly amazing action on wet, slippery roads. It does to the rain-drenched roads what your windshield wiper does to the windshield. Its spiral bars that never end act like a whole battery of windshield wipers. They sweep the water right and left, force it out through deep drainage grooves, make a dry track for the rubber to grip. Don't let a skid endanger your life. Don't let a blowout throw your car out of control. Start riding on the new Goodrich, spelled G-O-O-D-R-I-C-H, Goodrich Safety Silvertown. The sooner, the safer. The Shadow, Lamont Cranston, a man of wealth, a student of science, and a master of other people's minds, devotes his life to righting wrongs, protecting the innocent, and punishing the guilty, using advanced methods that may ultimately become available to all law enforcement agencies, Cranston is known to the underworld as the Shadow, never seen, only heard, as haunting to superstitious minds as a ghost, as inevitable as a guilty conscience. The Shadow's true identity is known only to his constant friend and aide, Margot Lane. Today's story, Death from the Deep. Look at the water, Captain. Calm as a mill pond. I tell you, I don't like it. Now, now, Mr. McLennan, that's not good talk for a first mate. You sound like a superstitious deck swabber. If the elements feel kindly toward us, let them be. I know, Captain, but five days with the sea as smooth as a skating rink is a bad omen. Well, Mr. McLennan, perhaps we'll have a good score tomorrow to restore your peace of mind. For myself, I'll take anything. What's that? Sounded like the engine room. That was more than a boiler, McLennan. Hello. Hello down there. I don't answer. Hello. Captain. Captain. We've been... Hello down there. We've been what? Captain Jones. Look. Look there. Look at that white path on the water coming toward us. It's a torpedo. We're not at war. Hold fast, Captain. It's going to hit amidships. Are all hands accounted for? Yes, Captain. Are all lifeboats clear? All but this one, sir. And lower away. All lively, men. We're just getting away in time, sir. Hey, what's that nose out of the water dead ahead, sir? Uh, it's a submarine. A submarine? So that's what did it. The blackguards? A man's coming out of the submarine patch, sir. He's got a machine gun. He's pointing at that. Stop! Stop for the love of heaven!
Acme Steamship Agency. I wish to cancel my reservation on the Princess Marie. But, madam, didn't you... I'm not sailing, I tell you. Why, it'd be suicide. But, Mr. Williams, you can ship your goods with us. Our boats are safe. No boat is safe. But you'd be insured. Yes, at four times the usual rate. Oh, no. You can cancel my shipment. Gentlemen of the Maritime Commission, we are confronted with a vital problem. In the past three months, there have been exactly 18 ships mysteriously sunk on the high seas. Ships belonging to the United States, Great Britain, Germany, Italy, Japan, in fact, every major power. This series of unexplainable marine disasters has created a panic throughout the nautical world. Passenger reservations are being canceled. Freight shipments are being withdrawn. Crews are deserting the ships. Gentlemen, something has got to be done. Waiter, some more coffee, Margot? Yes, please, Lamont. Two more coffees, waiter. Yes, sir. Now, what were you saying, Lamont? Just this. Three months ago, Margot, the first ship disappeared. A few days later, a second ship was sunk. This time, a bullet-ridden bodies of the crew were found dead, afloat in their lifeboats. Horrible. Each succeeding disaster has been increasingly horrible. And now all shipping is at a standstill. These atrocities could not have been brought about by international jealousies because each of the ships sunk has been owned by a company in a different country. Well, who can be responsible? I'm not sure. But my deduction is it's the work of a pirate. A pirate? But, but Lamont, a pirate in the 20th century? Yes, Margot. And one more callous, more bloodthirsty than any buccaneer who ever sailed the Spanish main. Then why isn't he tracked down? Because not a single person has ever survived these sinkings. Therefore, the pirate has never been seen. He must be seen sometimes. Not if he has a submarine. Submarine? Yes, Margot. But how could an individual be in possession of a submarine without it being known? If a man were rich and clever enough, he could have a submarine built in complete secrecy. There must be some way of finding him there out. There is. Before such a craft could be constructed, it has to be designed. There are very few expert designers of submarines in the world. In the brain of one of them, this pirate craft must have been conceived. But Lamont, a pirate submarine sounds fantastic. Even more fantastic, Margot, is the motive of the pirate. He's preyed on every kind of ship from the superliner to the common tramp. He can't be after booty because examination of the sunken hulls has revealed that nothing has been touched. Why, Lamont, why? To find an answer to that question is a task for the shadow. But how would you proceed? I've already made a few secret inquiries at the Navy Department in Washington. They told me of one chap who might be worth investigating, a Mr. Mr. Joseph Hart, a brilliant designer of naval craft who was dishonorably discharged from his position. Where can he be found? I have learned that he is living all alone in a small house on an oak road. The shadow is going to pay a call on Mr. Joseph Hart tonight. Will you pass me that bottle, please, Benton? Certainly. Here you are. Joseph, I'm sorry to see you indulging in liquor. It frequently loosens the tongue. It sometimes makes a man say things that he later regrets. What do you mean? Just this. We share a secret, Joseph. A secret which would be most unwise for either of us to divulge. I haven't said anything. I haven't talked. Not yet. My fear is for what you might say. Your nerve is deserting you, Joseph. You must pull yourself together. How can I pull myself together one night after night? I'm tortured by the vision of a procession of helpless ships sinking down, down to the murky depths, haunted by the faces of floating corpses, tormented by... Shut up! I was a fool. I designed and built that submarine. A service for which you were well paid. Yes, with money soaked in blood. I'm responsible for the havoc and the terror that you're insane. Don't blood. say that, you idiot. I'm no madman, do you hear? Why did you come here tonight, Benton? Because, Joseph, I've been wondering of late why I permit you to live. You're becoming increasingly dangerous to my interests. No, no. Unless you can prove to me that our secret is safe and that you will aid me in the future. No, I'll never do that. No? Well, in that case, I feel that you ought to be my guest on the next cruise of the I'd, submarine. I'd never come back. Is that what you mean? Quite true. But before, shall I say, before you leave us in mid-ocean, you'll have an opportunity to see the splendid efficiency with which your creation, the submarine... Operate. No. I'd rather you kill me right now and have it over with. And deprive you of witnessing the thrilling spectacle of my accurate marksmanship? To see them leap from the boats in terror like rats? No, no, Joseph. You can't miss seeing that. No. I'd do anything rather than be forced to see that. I thought you would. Maintain that attitude, Joseph. Or it may be necessary for me to request that you pack your yachting clothes. A contingency which we should both 
deeply regret. Good night. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? I'll tell you what you can do, Joseph Hart. Who's that? <laughs> There's a way to save you from the evil domination of Perry Vinton. Who are you? I am the voice of one who has come to help you. I am the instrument of your righteous vengeance. I am the shadow. The shadow? With my assistance, you can compensate for some of the wrong that you have done. But how? Tell me the secret that you share with Vincent. Oh, no, no. I can't. You I'm have afraid. You to fear if you remain silent. The shadow already knows enough to hang you, Joseph Hart. You haven't got anything on me. I heard every word that passed between you and Vinton in this room. Oh. Tell me what I want to know and save yourself. Or perhaps, as Vinton so aptly put it, you'd prefer to pack your yachting clothes. Nothing can save me. What I've done is done. I can never escape my conscience. Then your conscience must tell you that it's your duty to all that you can do to stop Vinton's outrages. Yes, 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 you're right. Now tell me the secret. Very well. Until a year ago, I knew Vinton only by his reputation as a millionaire sportsman. He was famous as a deep-sea fisherman and a big-game hunter. He came to me first seeking a design for a racing boat... I built it for him, and we became friends. And because of that friendship, you consented to build a submarine. Yes, but if not for the purpose that he later used it, he told me that he wanted for a new thrill, oh, believe me. Go on. So the submarine was built in Benton's private shipyard, out at Carey's Point. Knowledge of its construction was carefully guarded from the world. It was not until the day the boat was launched that he told me his true intention. What were those intentions? Vinton is a lunatic, coldly, murderously mad. He'd always been a killer, but he'd tired of shooting lions and gaffing marlin. Now his warped brain had turned to what he regarded as a new sport. The sinking of ships and the ruthless slaying of defenseless men. Now I understand. Where did they keep the submarine? I don't know. Are you telling the truth, Joseph Hart? I've told you everything. Why should I lie now? If I knew where that boat was, I'd blow it to pieces. Myself with it. Myself with it. Way. Myself. That's the idea. That's how I could fool Barry Benson. Why should I wait to die at his hand? No, no. What are you doing? I'll fool Barry Vincent. Here, put down that gun. No more tortured, sleepless night. I see no more screaming headlines. Another boat sunk and another and another. Don't, Joseph Hart, don't. Barry Vincent will never take me on that voyage. I'll fool him, I say, fool him. <laughs> Served us both. Now we shall see whom you have served best. Barry Vinton or the Shadow. Ladies and gentlemen, in a moment the Shadow will be back on the air with surprises, suspense, and a thrilling, unexpected climax. But meanwhile, here's something mighty important to bear in mind when you drive a car. Just remember that rainy days make the grass grow greener. They may bring out the best in flowers, but they bring out the worst in roads. Yes, beware. A road that's plenty safe when dry may become a dangerous skid trap when wet, sending your car skidding, spinning, swerving off the road. Motorists, why take this chance when you can now get a sensational new kind of tire that will stop you quicker, safer than you've ever stopped before? The new Goodrich Safety Silvertown with the Life Saver Tread. Impartial test conducted by the country's largest independent testing laboratory against the regular and premium price tires of America's six largest manufacturers proved that no tire tested, regardless of price, came up to the new Silvertown in non-skid action. Furthermore, these unbiased tests showed that the new Goodrich Silvertown with light saber tread gave more non-skid mileage than any of the other tires tested in its own price range. Imagine the new Goodrich Silvertown's Average 19.1% more miles before the tires wore smooth. Which is the same as saying you'll get every sixth mile free. 
Yes, many tires cost more than the new Goodrich Silver Towns, but no tire at any price can give you the unequal skid protection of the Lifesaver Tread, the exclusive blowout protection of the Golden Ply. Keep danger a stranger. Put a set of these life-saving long mileage tires on your car without delay. So, Margot, Hart finished telling me the story, and before I could stop him, he shot himself in the head. Poor man. Perhaps it was better that way. But the man, now how will you find the submarine? Joseph Hart told me that it was built at Vinton Shipyard out at Carey's Point. That's the logical place to start my search. Is that where you're going now? Yes. Oh, do be careful, Lamont. Remember, that man's a lunatic. He'll stop at nothing. The shadow hasn't anything to fear from Vinton. I hope you're right. Well, this is as far as we can safely drive without being seen. This is a desolate spot. Don't like it. There's a light. Yes. The shipyard. It seems to be surrounded by a high wall. It looks like a prison. Perhaps it is a prison. For those within its gates. Margot, before we go any further, I'll give you your instructions. Yes, sir, Mark. I've already been in touch with the United States Coast Guard. He's been promised to give me poor cooperation. Yes. Once I've found the submarine and no Vinton's plans... I shall communicate with you by our private wireless. And then? Then you will relay my message directly to the Coast Guard headquarters in Washington. I understand. Good luck to the shadow. The shadow thanks you. All right, let it down easy now. Okay, Phil. Well, that's the last of the torpedoes, Charlie. Hey, the sub must be going on a long cruise this time. Taking plenty of supplies and ammunition. Yeah. Hey, what's that? There's the wind blowing the door shut. What's the matter with you? Listen, Charlie, when are we going to get out of this joint? You know, we've been cooped up inside this shipyard for three months. It's giving me the creeps. Oh, now, take it easy. I'd rather be back in prison. There wasn't nothing scary about prison, and you knew when your time was up, you got out. Well, maybe we ain't never going to get out of here. Huh? What do you mean? Well, I mean this... Vinton guy's a bug. He ain't even let us read no newspaper since we come here. The stuff about hunting whales with torpedoes, that sounds screwy to you. Listen, if he don't let us out of here soon, I... Sh- here he comes now. Are all the torpedoes aboard? Uh, yes, sir. We just sent down the last load. Very well. Take care of these empty crates. Then you may turn in. Yes, sir. Um, Mr. Vinton? Yes. Well, we was wondering if we... Yeah, me and Charlie here was just talking about the, uh, well, uh, how we've been in the shipyard here a long time now, and... And uh, what Phil is trying to say, Mr. Vinton, is, well, could we have a couple of days off on the outside? I'm afraid that would be impossible. Oh, but Mr. Vinton, it's been three months. I've got a wife and kids. You're I... being well paid, aren't you? Oh, sure, you're giving us plenty of dough, all right, but we ain't getting no chance to spend it. And... You will remain here as long as your services are required. What if we don't want to stay here that long? What if we up and leave? Yeah. I wouldn't advise you to attempt that. You remember what happened to your associate, Mr. Hadley, when he tried to, as you say, up and leave? He fell from the wall. You mean... You mean that wasn't no accident, huh? No. He was shot down. Oh. So, um... Do you still want to quit? I thought that. Good night, gentlemen. Yeah. Looks like we're in here for a long, long time. Yeah. Maybe you are. But I'm going to figure a way to get out of here, see? <laughs> perhaps I can be of some assistance to you. Who said that? I heard it, too. I said, perhaps I can help you if you wish to get out of here. Who's that talking? Where are you? Don't bother to look for me. You can't see me. What is this? One of Vinton's gags or something? No, I am not speaking for Vinton. I speak for myself. Who are you? Men call me the Shadow. The Shadow? Shadow. How'd you get in here? The Shadow is everywhere. Well, what do you want? I wish to bargain with you. Well, what kind of a bargain? By this time, you must be aware that you are both at the mercy of a madman. He's right, Charlie. You will never leave this place alive unless Barry Vinton is brought to justice. What can we do about it? I will promise you your freedom if you will just answer my question. Wait a minute. What do you think, Charlie? Well, we're taking a chance. This may be a trick. It is no trick. You have the shadow's word. Well, what do you what do you want to know? Where is Vinton's submarine? 
Right below our feet in a secret underground berth. When does it sail again? Tonight, at midnight. What is its destination? Well, I... I heard Vinton say something to the mate about Cape Francis. Good. Sailing at midnight, Cape Francis. The shadow wishes him good hunting. <laughs> Calling Margot Lane. Calling Margot Lane. Proceed as instructed. Communicate the following information to Coast Guard headquarters. Pirate submarine sails at midnight for waters off Cape Francis. Impress on Coast Guard the importance of following directions implicitly if wished to bait the madman who is terrorizing the Atlantic. What is our position, Mr. Brush? We are 100 miles due east of Cape Francis, sir. Are we in the regular shipping lane? Yes, Mr. Vincent. Have we enough visibility for clear observation? The sun is just recent, sir. Good. I'll take over the periscope now. Very well, sir. A fine day for hunting, Mr. Brush. Hello, what's this? Have you sighted something, sir? Take a look. See what you make of it. There is smoke. It looks like a steamer. Splendid. Signal the engine room. Full speed ahead. Yes, sir. I can see a funnel. Full speed ahead. Ah, this is the life. There's nothing like it. The sighting of fresh quarry on this periscope. The excitement of the chase. The spine-tingling thrill when the torpedo finds its mark. And then the climax. On Dick, shooting them down with a machine gun like scurrying rats. <laughs> Mr. Proust, stand by the torpedo tubes. We're coming up fast. Yes, sir. Stand by the torpedo tube. Aye, aye, sir. We'll cut across her bow and swing to stop it. That should give us a perfect shot. Very good, sir. Be prepared to rise to the surface quickly. If we make a direct hit with the top first torpedo. Very good, sir. Stand by the valve and elevate us. Aye, aye, sir. We're almost within range. Cut to half speed. Half speed ahead. Torpedo tubes number one and two are loaded, sir. Torpedo tubes number one and two are loaded, sir. Look. Look, Brouch. It's a fine big liner. Let me see, sir. Why, that's the Orpheus. The Orpheus. I remember now reading of her sailing. She has a full passenger list. Several ambassadors are aboard. <laughs> full passenger list, eh? That sounds most promising. <laughs> Number one tube, ready to fire. Number one tube, ready to fire. Now, I'll bring her a little more to the starboard. A little more. Oh, there. Number one, fire. Number one, fire. Yes, it's heading straight for a side. No deflection. Should be a perfect hit. Closer. Closer. Going to hit. Now. Why? Hail to explode. There's a dud. Number two tube, ready to fire. Number two tube, ready to fire. Number two, fire. Number two, fire. Uh, we won't fail this time. <laughs> yes, you will, Mr. Vincent. You just fired another dud. Who dared say that? I did. Who are you? Come out here where I can see you. You will never see me. I am the shadow. Shadow, eh? I've heard of you. The torpedo hit, but it failed to explode again. Sir. Reload the torpedo tubes. Yes. That would be a waste of time, Vinton. I've seen to it that all of the torpedoes are dud. You'll regret this, Mr. Shadow. <laughs> this is the one time that you've matched wits with a mind cleverer than your own. Blow out the ballast tanks for a quick rise to the surface. Yes, sir. I'll show you. I'll sink that boat with my deck guns. Benton, you're a madman. Madman, am I? <laughs> Very well, I'll show you the full extent of my madness. Dick, a voice, sir. Open the conning tower hatch. Dick crew, stand by to man the guns. Aren't you coming up on deck, Shadow, to witness the kill? I am already on deck, Benton. Devil plague you. How don't you get up here? Show yourself. That is unnecessary, but never fear. I'll stay near you. The guns are jammed, sir. Jammed? Why, that's impossible. I neglected to tell you, Vinton, that I rendered your guns useless. Oh. oh, so you think that you've outwitted me, Shadow. But you're wrong. Signal the engine room full speed ahead. Aye, aye, sir. Steer directly for that vessel's side. What are you doing now, Vinton? The prow of this submarine is equipped with a ramming device. 
With it, we can sink any vessel afloat without injury to us. <laughs> you didn't foresee that, did you, Shadow? In a few moments, we will rip open the hull of that liner and send it to the bottom as effectively as with any torpedo. <laughs> uh, so you don't believe me? Oh, yes, I believe you. But that liner is completely deserted. It was set adrift there by the Coast Guard. It is a veritable floating mine with enough explosives aboard to blow you to kingdom come. You're lying! You'll know soon enough. You haven't far to go. Reverse engines! Reverse engines? And will we stop in time? We're getting closer. No. No, no, we're stopping. We're stopping. We're not going to hit. Uh, <laughs> you see, Shadow, I've outwitted you after all. No, Benton. You maneuvered your submarine alongside this ship just as I planned. All right, up there. Here's your men. <laughs> Coast Guard. It's a trap. It's a trap. Yes, a trap, Barry Vinton. And this ends your reign of piracy and ruthless murder. Very smart, aren't you, Shadow? But not as smart as you think you are. Stop him! He's going inside the submarine! He's closing the hatch! Yes. Yes, they all think they're so clever. But no one can outsmart Barry Vinton. I'll go to the engine room. I'll maneuver the dive. <laughs> They'll never get me. I'm master below here. Now. Now check the valve. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I'd love to hear what the shadow is saying up there now. He's probably saying it's no use trying to maneuver that dive, Barry Vincent. You... You... How did you get here, Shadow? Why... I merely followed you. Show yourself, show yourself, Shadow, and I'll shoot you down in your track. Here I am, over here in this corner. Come ahead and shoot, Mr. Vincent. Well, Shadow? Well? You just missed me. Why, you... Come on, man, here he is. Mastership is deplorable, Mr. Benton. Who are you? That does not matter. Why don't you tell them who you are, you glory seeker? I seek no glory. My reward is that ships and men can once more safely sail the seas. The Shadow's work is done. You have been listening to a dramatized version of one of the many copyrighted stories which appear in the Shadow Magazine. <laughs> the weed of crime bears bitter fruit. Crime does not pay. The Shadow knows. <laughs> all the characters and all the persons named are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental.